What's up guys? Today we're back in the saw shop working on a 372 XP 52 millimeter big bore kit. Now instead of limping in and just coming up with some numbers and grinding away, I really wanted to take my time guys and do my research. So I've been reading a lot in the two stroke tuners handbook. And if you haven't already, and if you're into two strokes, thinking about two stroke porting, you 100% have to get this book downloaded on your phone. I think a hardback copy is probably one to 200 bucks. They're pretty salty, but you can get it for free online. I also highly recommend Eric Gore's stuff, and some of his stuff is in the Two Stroke Tuners Handbook. He's got a book out on motocross and off-road performance handbook, the third edition, and that book is highly informative as well. Yes, I know it's motocross and dirt bikes, but kind of the same principles. Yeah, some of your motocross bikes nowadays definitely have some pretty aggressive exhaust port timing durations, but you can still figure out a lot of stuff just by reading through a lot of this stuff. It starts to really paint the picture. For me, sometimes I have to read it two or three times. But let's talk about the goals for this big board. I did not want to dive into this just throwing out somebody else's numbers. No disrespect to anybody doing that. I know everybody does it to some extent. It's, it's okay, right? But what I wanted to do is take some of this information I'm retaining from reading this book and put it out there in some of this work I'm about to show you. For starters, guys, we did the base gasket delete. And what we want to do is retard the port timing numbers for more low to mid-range grunt for pulling a long bar. That being said, we're going to tighten up the squish, gain compression, and get more power stroke, making more low to mid-range grunt. And after reading a lot through Eric's motocross book, a lot of times what they do is they put epoxy in those transfer tunnels and tighten up the transfer tunnels, making them have improved velocity for air-fuel ratio All mixtures right, so getting up into the combustion my work, chamber. Um, if, as long as you're not um, staying in the same area uh, and kind of making sure the file is not rocking, um, but you know, do your best to keep the file flat and uh, you just, you know, I kind of come straight across, I corner it a little bit just to make sure I'm getting the material inside that radius and then I keep rocking it around. Obviously more aggressive than this and then I'm going around and around and around. Stay very smooth on the file. I'm not talking like this is going to work like it's success yet, guys, that's for sure. And then I'm kind of taking my file here like you would check a warped head, rocking it around. And guys, that doesn't have all that. There might be a, a hair a little rock once you get out here a little bit, but that's really close. Gasket maker should fill that in. As long as you're not getting no crazy uh, rocks, you know, off your straight edge or air gaps, it should seal up. Now here's one I gotta work on, guys. See if you can look over to the left side. All right, so if if you can see that, and put down equal pressure. You see my gap over there on the left? And it's got a little rock to it. That's okay, it means we just have a little belly right here. That means I was working these corners probably a little harder than I was this inner portion right here. So I'm gonna try and just concentrate on that center. We'll see how we make out, guys. <laughs> I don't suggest doing it this way, but it's just something I come up with. Yeah, guys, so as expected, I'm bellying, um, especially on this very narrow side, and then I did over here. Uh, the file seems to be doing good over top these lower transfers with, uh, with staying uh, pretty true. So what I've been doing, and I, I just brought back this side. So with just a file, you may find yourself uh, running into trouble. Uh, luckily, the handy dandy uh, grinder here so I know I have a belly from here to here. And what I just did on the other side 
was just work this a little bit to keep it as true as possible. And then keep checking with my straight edge. Works pretty good, guys. Is it efficient? Absolutely not. It, I'm a few hours on this already, you know, just this base. When I could have had it in a lathe and probably uh, <laughs> chucked it up and done it in a few minutes, but we'll get there, guys. Yeah, so I'm already taking that belly right out of that. I could go a little bit further. So it is possible, I think, guys, um, with a little bit of work. So. And that belly's all but gone there. <clears throat> and the one I had wasn't really crazy bad or anything. Looking good, guys. All right. So, last I had this on, I think I was at 33,000 squish. So, I mean, even, even if I cut enough to get rid of the thickness of uh, the gasket maker itself, which should only be a few thousands, of an inch but um i i mainly want to i was at a 99 exhaust roof i want to stretch that a little further to make this more torqueier all right guys just truck this uh cylinder back up again and we are now at 27 thousandths started off around 34 thousandths and now we're down i'm gonna check it one more time make sure we got I got about 26 thousandths here. So that's pretty good, guys. We're, we're definitely getting that squish tighter. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more filing and then make sure this thing is true as possible. You can also get in there and look how the base is seated up. Now, obviously, you're not gonna be able to get in there and look at the sides really well, but just use the edge of your micrometer and to true it up as best as you can. And we're gonna send it with our hillbilly machine work. So damn near 40,000 squish was definitely unacceptable. That's why I moved into figuring a way out to cut this base. I hope it works out, guys. We're going to give it a shot. This is my first time trying to cut a base with a file, so we'll see how that goes. But we definitely wanted to keep the compression up. By throwing this pop-up piston in, I didn't want to sacrifice the compression with some 40,000 squish. I want this thing, if it's going to be a low to mid-range grunter, having good crazy high compression. That's what tends to favor a mid to low torquey saw is higher compression. You can find that in the Two Stroke Tuner's handbook. You can also find it in Eric Gore's motocross book. Mid to low end power favors higher compression. If you're gonna build something that's making high RPM, then it'll favor a little bit lower compression. You do not need all that compression. I know this is a little bit crazy, but it's time to epoxy the exhaust. This exhaust roof was setting at a 99 degree. I could not have that for what I wanted to target. Even with cutting the base, I was still setting at 99 degrees on the All exhaust. All right guys, so, you know, after taking 10 to 12 thousandths off the base here, we achieved a pretty good squish. Um, we definitely tightened it up. We're down into the lower 20 thousandths, I think around 23 thousandths or so, um, which is awesome. Uh, with the pop-up piston, this thing should make some compression. Um, I think I left off like so on the wheel somewhere around 99 exhaust roof, which is a little high. Um, and I'm not going to be able to achieve that with, unless I were to cut the squish band and uh it's just near impossible uh, without a machine i shouldn't say that because we done cut this base right we did that without a machine now could i get like a perfect circular uh sanding pad in there maybe uh that could be possible but i already am gonna have so much time wrapped in something that i don't know if it's gonna work or not so Let's just hope for the best, guys. Uh oh. You thinking what I'm thinking? I'm gonna mess this up. <laughs> Let's grind away, guys. So, bottom dead center, 
Um, even with the last uh, setup I have, especially if you lower the base, you're gonna have the piston um, up over the transfer. So when you got your air fuel coming out of the upper tr or lower transfers windows, it's hitting against this. Now you could just raise your transfers. I get it. But what I'm gonna try to do is ramp this piston. So it's it's gonna one bring it bring it out in an upward trajectory into the cylinder just ever so slightly, and it's gonna clear the piston. The piston there won't be no wall there. That's my thoughts, guys. This is all a big experiment with this Chinese cologne saw, and you don't know until you try. Guys, this is trial and error. This 100% could be a bad idea, but we're gonna give it a shot. Don't ask me why, but it totally drove me nuts every time I looked in there and looked at the transfer window and saw that the piston was blocking about one third of the transfer window. Am I crazy or what? All right, here's a rough cut of the intake. Starting to get that lung effect. Um, I'm probably gonna run up and valley this just a little bit more. Um, remember, it's a balancing effect. We don't wanna go hogging, going too far. And then you'll also, will get spit back if you take that intake too big. Do I think that's something we gotta worry about with this size of an intake? No, no I don't. It's just something to keep in mind, guys. Yeah, I'm getting some stuff on my putty there, but it's already gotten pretty hard there. And uh, that should all just uh, grind right out of there. But it's going to be interesting, guys. 100% this uh, cheapo cylinder uh, was definitely just uh, too much duration, uh, too too high of an exhaust roof. It was sitting over well over 160, so I mean, I had to do something about that to make this thing what I want. So we'll see. It could be an epic failure or it could be an epic success. We shall see. All right, guys. So we got the split mandrel here with some sandpaper and we're gonna work this exhaust. Uh, the epoxy has a 24 hour cure time and a machine time of only five hours. So we had this setting on top of my coal stove all night long. Uh, it appears to be good and hard. Wish me luck, guys. I'm gonna start in the center and then work my way out. Uh, the stock contour of this exhaust is like a slightly oval or slightly rounded shape on the exhaust roof. So that's what we're gonna try to achieve here.
So if you look in there, you can see where I got a little bit more epoxy on this side. So I'm gonna start working out. Uh, I'm gonna start working that side of the uh, exhaust. All right, I'm gonna tell you what my goal is here, why it's on my mind. Uh, we're gonna work at the, getting this exhaust over and getting that more symmetrical. Um, so I, what I wanna do is widen the exhaust too. So again, in the two-stroke tuner's handbook, the old way of you know increasing your blowdown would be by uh, raising the exhaust roof, right? From you know how far it's from your transfers is what your blowdown rating is. Uh, but what it also says in there that you do get increased blowdown by widening the exhaust too, guys. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, guys, so she's not looking too bad. I'm gonna have to time this thing really soon. But what I did here is I can kind of see that there's like a little dip like this in the, in the exhaust roof to meet where I raised the exhaust, if that makes any sense. So I took this to one of the other cylinders and that's my exhaust angle. Here's the cylinder and there's the exhaust. So I bent that so I can mock the contour in here and set this right inside the cylinder. And then I can see my angle. And that's what I'm gonna use as a reference. All right, guys, I just got her on the timing wheel here. There's a look at the exhaust. Yeah, she's pretty down there. You look at her epoxy work there. Not too hateful, guys. Not too hateful, but we definitely, uh, I think we ended up at a 148 duration, so a little less than what I'd like, but I wasn't going to go, I have so much time in this thing that I wasn't gonna go take a little bit more off to get around 150, 155. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with 148. And this, these numbers are without uh, any Honda Bond or any sealant, obviously, so we'll probably gain a little bit there, a few thousandths anyway. We ended up on a 106 on the exhaust roof. Not not too bad, which gave us a 148. It's still pretty good. Um, our intake timing was 75 degrees, 150 degrees duration. And then our transfers are at 123. Um, and then our blow down was 17 degrees. And our squish clearance, uh, 26 thousandths. It's not bad guys and then on my notes we widen the exhaust uh just a little bit and keep in mind the two-stroke tuner's handbook uh when you widen the exhaust you are gaining blow down so you know so that should help in this spectrum here um we're gonna find out guys yeah so there's a shot back here uh i guess since lowering the intake i'm gonna have to trim this up with the grinder so I'm gonna have to pull the cylinder, wrap up the crankcase there really well, make sure we don't get any uh, debris or micro plastic fibers or uh, material down into these main uh, main bearings off this crankshaft because that, that wouldn't be good. So we're gonna uh, get ready to do all that. And uh, I'm gonna chamfer everything up on the exhaust. And uh, we're gonna start putting this thing together, guys. All right, we just cut that notch out there to fit the intake boot on there. I have to get everything cleaned up and file those edges down. Should be ready to send the cylinder. All right, so we just tested everything. Everything's looking good here. So it's about time to first get our C-clips or circlips on this piston, get a ring on. I'm only gonna run one ring on this and uh, get this cylinder put on.
All right, guys, <clears throat> in the beginning, as you've seen, we had a pretty ugly squish clearance, something like 38 thousandths. See where we ended up with all that work. 26 and a half thousand squish. It's going back and forth. 27 thousandths. So we'll call it 27 thousandths squish. Not bad, guys. That was a lot of work. Guys, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little nervous for myself. So we ended up on the uh, 105 exhaust roof, which is really nice uh, with the gasket maker on there. We had an intake of 76 degrees, and we had the transfers at 124, which gives us 19 degrees of blowdown, and we finished up with the 27,000 squish on this thing, which is awesome, guys. It was a lot of work. It was, uh, you know, around 12 thousandths. We had to take off the base. We ended up with a 150 duration on the exhaust and a 152 intake duration. All right, guys, here's our custom bullhorn exhaust. Got her painted up to make her look a little bit nicer. She's making really good compression here, guys. And that compression stroke there. She just comes around right there. I sprayed in amongst the base there with my uh, soap, soapy water, just to check why I was here. Um, I got everything back on so everything seems good let's uh hope for the best guys i'm telling you what this thing has some killer compression i'm talking killer <laughs> it's uh it's not pulling over too easy without the decomp <laughs> uh, i might try a quick pop off but other than that i want to give a good cure time on that epoxy and uh, the gasket maker's only had about an hour. So I might just see if it pops off real quick and wait till tomorrow. Put the bar and chain on this thing and see how she pulls. guys we popped the exhaust off everything looks pretty good with the piston nothing crazy going on there oh, well you guys can see that so tomorrow is the day you cannot even pull this thing over without the decon pressing that high it's kind of crazy All right, guys, she's alive and she is running. Running pretty good out there without the bar on it. I do not want to get this thing too hot right off the back. I want to make sure we get a good cure time on the 24 hours on the exhaust epoxy I did. And, uh, and then we're going to get out and put this thing to the test. 
stick around for the next video because that's going to be me putting this to the test guys thanks for watching digging deep if you're not already subscribed go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me give me a like comment down below and don't forget to turn on those bell notifications we'll catch you next time